Hello fellow evocateurs of magic, I am Pruitt and this is Jim Davis and on, on today's web DM we are going to unpack the school of evocation. So let's get all of our books and dig through these near hundred spells on web DM. Evocation. <sighs> the big, the bad, the bold. This is the school of just kicking ass and taking names. Yes, it's back, baby. It's back. It's yeah, back. The, well, it's been the, back the, years, the, the yeah, the uh, <laughs> oft maligned in past editions. Yes, yeah. For, for being toothless. Toothless, you know, not being able to keep up with monster HP inflation. Better spells uh, yeah, yeah. Are, are worth your slots. But in fifth edition, they they really have seemed to have number one given evocation some some signature big time uh, sort of spells, and then also given it all of the spells. <laughs> All of them. All of them. We do, yeah, we always kind of do a breakdown of them, and it's just like... Yeah, they, I mean, there are hundred evocation spells. Right, and that's across all the classes, all the classes. Uh, and, and the like. But we're, we're looking at these. We are looking at all the classes, not just uh, the the arcane uh, classes here. And so, any other two schools, like uh, you know, illusion and enchantment, are still not. That only more... adds up to seventy. Right, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> evocation is a big school, and and you can see why. If you're, uh, you know, if you're a new player, if you're just coming back to the game, big flashy magic that that does damage, that has like obvious effects that doesn't require a lot of uh, round to round sort of like keeping up with a spell that that's uh, you know ongoing. It's just like boom, I do it, I'm done, it's over. That's where they would put a lot of their effort. And the Evoker Wizard is sort of in the basic rules. You can see why Evocation Magic takes the place that it does as, as sort of one of the bigger spell schools. And okay. when, you look, when you look at the definition of it, yeah. you what can is see it? What is why it would be that way. So the definition in the Player's Handbook says that Evocation spells manipulate magical energy to produce a desired effect. Uh, some call it blasts of fire or lightning, and others channel positive energy to heal wounds. And so you sort of like think that manipulating magical energy, producing effects with it, you, you really kind of see why this would be the spell school that has the most uh, magic in it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. There's a lot of effects that you can uh, produce with that. Magic is an energy in and of itself, so. Right, and these definitions of spells, I think they are worthwhile to look at and, and to examine because they help dungeon masters and, and players of these uh, of, of magic using classes to mm -hmm. understand how their magic fits into the larger world that they're building at their tables. So in this case, evocation suggests the presence of a, a magical energy of some kind, as opposed to a, a reversed kind of definition of it, which would be it magically manipulates energy, that that's a different kind of spell school, right? Like that's one where it, it can't create its own energy out of nothing. You can't just call forth fire uh, right. out of nothing. There has to be the presence of fire elsewhere that you then manipulate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like reversing that and saying this, this is magical energy, number one, it frees the D&D the spell system to not have to worry so much about a fidelity to kind of <laughs> say real world thermodynamics or, <laughs> or anything like that. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's fully in in the realm of, of fairy dust and, and and donkey farts and all that other kind of, I don't know, just magical Magic. stuff. It's unmoored from that. And that bothers some people, right? It like does. Some people that, that, that it, it uh, you know, lacks a, a consistency, just sort of offends their, their perception of how it should be. And the wonderful mm -hmm. thing is we can change all of this if we like it. <laughs> I'm stopping you, right? <laughs> right, right. Uh, so of the three definitions, right, uh, mag uh, manipulate magical energy, obviously used to summon forth, uh, you know, lightning, fire. Uh, and then there's this other one. It channels positive energy to heal wounds. And mm -hmm. healing magic is one of those weird ones. We discussed it a bit on necromancy. Uh, that uh, you know, it's like it, it's changed every every edition. I think in third it was conjuration. The healing spells were conjuration yeah. spells, and then maybe they were actual necromancy in like second edition, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, when you, I'm sorry, but by the definition, isn't necromancy the you have power over the energies of life and death? Right. This is the and weird thing, right? If if this is why the is definition it healing necromancy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> If this is the definition of evocation, then shouldn't we change the definition uh, of necromancy? And of course, there are a lot of spells that are in necromancy that maybe shouldn't be, or vice versa. And so all of the spell schools have uh, identity problems. Yes. <laughs> and and uh, there are many spells that could easily fit into multiples, and, and you know you might want to consider making those alterations if consistency and the like is important for your table. So that's kind of like just an overview of the definition and, and a way in which sort of thinking about these things can help uh, deepen your understanding and, and add a richness to your world. With regards to magical energy. Yes. Is everything in, in evocation 
really magical energy? I, I, <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. I do. Just, I do. I do know where you're going with it. So I, I you know, this energy manipulation is, is I see it in, in two parts, right? It, yeah. it can, can create and eliminate. And so in my mind, that's how it, 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 it does both fire and cold. Yeah. Right? It creates heat and, and withdraws it and, and sort of like can uh, manipulate that. It can also do the same with sort of like creating the conditions necessary to produce lightning. Like, or, or, or some other sort of like uh, or sonic or force or yeah, something thunder like that. Thunder damage. I mean, I, I, I'm there with you. But acid is considered an energy source in 5th edition and has been for a while now in, in Dungeons & Dragons. Yeah. I, I see why, right? Like there's a sense of completeness to the magical energies that you could potentially damage someone with. Mm -hmm. Cold, fire, lightning. You. I mean, it streamlines it for sure. To me, it, this is where <laughs> my suspension of disbelief starts to groan and creak. Well, we already have a school that's used to summon substances yeah. and create physical objects mm -hmm. out of nothing that would then do whatever the properties that they have suggest. And so, like, why is it that, say, something like Vitriolic Sphere or Melf's Acid Arrow is in evocation, mm -hmm. but Acid Splash isn't? I, I, this is where I want, I want consistency uh, and, and yeah. demand answers. And, all, and, and also... <laughs> Poison. Poison is another one. There are spells that that uh, that summon poison, particularly Chromatic Orb and Chaos Bolt. And yeah. These are two first level uh, evocation spells that deal multiple types of damage. Although Chaos Bolt, as much as I love it, is probably in like five different schools. You know, it's probably like a, well, it, it, yeah. you know, they should bring back the all. The all, yes, yeah. oh, definitely. They definitely need to so, bring some back of those the spells that just like it's just universal. Like yeah. it's just magic. It's magic. It's magic. You know? it's, it's sort of the, the, put the healing spells in in all. All is a useful category that you know that you can apply sort of things like contingency, which mm -hmm. is somehow an evocation effect, mm -hmm. uh, as well as some other sort of like the magic of magic type spells that yeah. can go in, in all uh, or universal category. Yeah, you know another one that sticks in my crawl, Jim Davis. What's that? Flame blade. Flame blade. <laughs> Flaming sphere. <laughs> yes. Conjuration. Uh huh. Flame blade. You 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 produce mm -hmm. a flame. Yes. Flame Blade yep. produces a flaming thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it says you evoke a flame you blade. I mean, I get yeah. it. They use the term, they use the word, the verbiage of the spell to to give it purpose there. To give it but, purpose there, but still, like it's a ball or it's a sword, but you're still conjuring a flaming thing that yes. you use. Yeah. So why is it? well, it's the same again. Yeah. Similarly with like uh, Melf's Acid Arrow and Acid Splash, yeah. we've got like Flame Blade and and uh, Create Bonfire, mm -hmm. right? Create Bonfire is like a static uh, flaming sphere in some in, in some cases, right? You're creating a, a patch of fire that sustains itself. Why isn't that evocation? I, or why isn't Flame Blade conjuration? You know, well, those, they, are no, the, it, those are the kinds of things yeah. that, that uh, I ask myself because I do, like I said, I do appreciate it a type of consistency yeah. to the, the way that the spells are categorized, even if the individual spells, I want them to feel more magical. Uh, uh, another, one of, <laughs> oh, another one for me? Yeah. Message is transmutation, right? Yes, message is transmutation. Why sure. is sending evocation? Oh like, yeah. it's literally just a better version of the almost the same exact spell. I talk to them, they talk to me. Yeah. Now yeah, I can what, do it over what, any so, distance. Right, so what magical energy is being evoked? to carry your message My mentally, words. your words mentally words. to another person. And, and telepathy, right, is, is sort of similar. It's, it's another, uh, you know, evocation effect. And like, why aren't they divination? Why aren't they enchantment? You know, enchantment is mind magic. A, a lot of it is about like producing psychic effects and manipulating the mind of a target. Why wouldn't it be that, that connecting mind to mind is also a part of mind magic? Mm -hmm. Right, and we'll, you know, obviously we'll, we're trying to stick with evocation here, but, but you can see how this very broad category of, of manipulating magical energy, summoning blasts of things, oh, and also as part of that magical energy is this healing, and then there's these other effects that are part of it that are like, how are they magical energy, and, and when I get really uh, flustered by all of this, I, mm -hmm. I sort of look at it from a different perspective and say maybe they're not going for a type of thematic consistency, but are going for a type of effect, right? Like yeah. it, acid is, there's gonna be evocation acid spells because you don't wanna say, you know, have a, a, a caster who relies heavily on evocation magic not having access to those. But this isn't that addition, and there, you know, at least for the arcane classes, you can specialize and not have to give up any other schools. So I'm back to square one now, you know. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much, right? Energy, yeah. So uh, the other types of energy that that, are, that get produced, obviously thunder is one that that seems to be uh, a logical. I really like that. And then we mentioned force. There's a lot of cool.
cool force effects. And, yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm completely fine with that. You got your shields, you got your magic missiles. Right, right, uh, right. You know, all, all kinds that, of stuff. All that kind of stuff. That is great. You got the, uh, you got the temporary battle bunker known as Leoman's Tiny Hut. <laughs> <laughs> and there's that. <laughs> you know. Right. <laughs> I have my feelings on Leoman's Tiny Hut. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. To me, you're, you're conjuring a thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so... You want it to be conjured. You want I it to be mean, like a conjured effect. I don't know. I mean, it, in, in the sense that it is a protection thing. It is kind of a, an effect. It is a force effect that, that keeps things out. I see it. Yeah. You know, it's like an eight-hour version of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I would just though, call it something different. I'd call it yeah. like Leoman's Habitable Hemisphere and yeah. just be done with it. And Tiny Hut is that someone's a wooden hut. Thatch roof yeah, and a reed floor. Version. <laughs> and it's, it's furnished. And if you want to take it apart and build something with it, you can. Uh-huh. Or uh, just set it on fire <laughs> when you leave. A habitable hemisphere, all the way, hashtag habitable hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so... <laughs> Put that on a shirt. Sticking with magical manipulation for a minute, and the, this energy manipulation, where did these energies come from? Yeah. And in, in, in traditional uh, Dungeons and Dragons, in, in baseline D&D, there are the inner planes, right? And, and they are the, the furnace, the, the furnace of creation for all of the multiverse. They the, provide the building blocks for the prime material plane. Mm-hmm. There's these sort of elemental uh, beings that live there that, that have a place in the cosmos. And it's presumably where these evokers, or when a, a magic user uses an evocation spell, it's drawing the energy from these places and bringing it into the prime material. Now, my mind just starts immediately going like, well, what are the magical conduits that travel through the ethereal plane that link the prime and the thing? That surely the ethereal must be linked by thousands and millions of filaments as the mortal casters draw the energy from the thing. Does that mean that someone could come into the ethereal plane and disrupt all of that, thereby eliminating the school of evocation entirely? And maybe that's the plot of your next arch villain or something. Yeah, see, I, I just see like, <laughs> to me, what I see is all the planes are kind of stacked on top of like each other. Like an enchilada? Right? Like an like enchilada, lasagna? right? But magic yeah. permeates vertically. And ah. that's how it touches on everything. Gotcha. Okay. So when you tap into the magic, you are tapping there, but it goes to the plane you want. And so right. it's like a, almost like a, like a phone switchboard. Sure. And like, you know, you're, when you cast your spell, you're basically calling the operator and be like, yeah, can I get the fire plane, please? I want to do a fire bolt right quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's out? Okay, cool. There you go. And I, I think, like, thinking about the metaphysics of your magic, and, and, and Forgotten Realms does this, right? Forgotten Realms has the weave. And yeah. the weave, uh, the, the various schools of magic have different patterns in the weave. And a dispel magic is the disruption of those threads of the weave uh, to attempt to uh, erase their temporary formation. A dead magic zone is the complete absence of the th- strands of the weave. Wild magic is they're all tangled and snarled. And so it provides this narrative for how magic works. And there's a there are gods and deities and goddesses and the like that are in control in control of managing the weave. Some of them have created a different version of the weave that they draw a different type of mm-hmm. magical power from. And it plays through the cosmology of the Forgotten Realms. It informs how spellcasters cast their spells, it informs how they learn about their magic, it binds all spellcasters together in one form of of magic, even Mm -hmm. though they have different spell lists, and it provides this narrative structure for the game, and you can use that model, nothing wrong with the weave, you can use a colors of magic style that we've mentioned before that that, uh, I like using from uh, Warhammer, in which Mm -hmm. each of the types of magic is its own distinct thing, and is manipulated in a different way, and is used in a different way. The player's handbook might reduce everything down to verbal, somatic, and material, but in the fiction of the world, a, the casting of an evocation spell looks very different than the casting of a conjuration spell. Oh, yeah. You know, the types of movements, the types of magical words that you would use, the types of arcane instruments you might have that help you channel that energy would be very different. And that, to me, is tied intimately to the inner planes and the cosmology of, your, uh, of the world. And if you're not using the base cosmology, then it, it may be worthwhile to think, like, Where's all this magical energy coming from? Uh, why does it be- seemingly behave different than natural forms of energy? And what's the relationship between uh, natural forms of energy and their magical counterpart? You know, maybe there is no such thing as natural energy. Maybe the sun is the portal to the pl- is a portal to the plane of fire or radiance or, or whatever. That's, you that's know? how I kind of have it. In, uh, <laughs> I think that's the way it is in Spelljammer. Is yeah, that they, they are kind of like they're sort of portals like or little, conduits. Yeah, little conduits mm-hmm. or whatever. I, I like to think of it as they're just kind of like protrusions from. They kind of like, they permeate the prime material from those planes. And sure, it's just kind sure. of like like a zit of energy or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's winter not because the axis of the globe that your planet's on is uh, at a certain angle in its orbit around the sun, but it's winter because the plane of cold has uh, has neared. 
you know, yeah. in, in the, the in veil the, between is a little thinner. Yeah, in the great orrery, uh, the, the great planar orrery, now, you know, your plane is coming around and, and moving away from fire and more towards cold, and that's just what the effect that it has on your world. And so, in that sense, the evoker is someone that's maybe in tune with the movements of these magical energy planes or the currents of magical energy as it moves through the world. And they're uh, simply just a channel uh, through that, whether we're talking Tempest Cleric that's blowing things up with call lightnings and shatters or an evoker that's that's protecting their friends from the fireball or, mm -hmm. you know, or, or a... Or a uh, light cleric that's just burning everything. Right, just burning everything or, or, the, or the druid that, that's blasting around or the warlock that's, you know, using their eldritch blast. They're all sort of like... What else are they going to use? <laughs> right, what else are they going to use? Come on. <laughs> why, why do they even give him any other cantrips? Do the warlock line. <laughs> Love that meme. <laughs> it's great. Cast one. Eldritch Blast. Okay. Yay! <laughs> Those are things worth uh, thinking about, and also worth uh, you know, is there a plane of magical force somewhere? Uh, is mm -hmm. there? What are these places like? Are they places you can visit? Uh, you know, thinking about that and and why cosmology and the like are important for your setting because they can sort of like undergird it and, and provide structure. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to put a barrier up between this part and the next part of the conversation, but to go back to oddballs right quick, Wall of Stone. Yes. How Wall is of that stone. an energy? How, I don't know. How is it? It's stone. It's stone. It, con yeah. I mean, it, it, it conjures a wall of stone. Let's not even... Pruitt's hit on another thing. If the whole point of conjuration magic is to bring things across planar barriers, mm -hmm. then why do we even have evocation in the first place if evocation seems to be a subschool of conjuration because evocation is the conjuration subschool that pulls energy across planar barriers? This is why looking... This is one of the reasons why as much... <laughs> As much as I enjoy uh, consistency in, in the magic system, thinking about it and trying to make it consistent can be a maddening experience. Yeah. The only answer I have for you, Pruitt, is that it's pulling the magical earth energy from the plane of elemental earth and putting it there. Don't ask me why all of the other things that create stones and rocks and earth are not also in evocation. <laughs> Okay. I mean, you know, it's just we. I, I come to you for this. In, for this, I got no answers for, for, for it. We just walk away, burn it down. <laughs> this damn spell school. Cast fireball and just walk away. Yeah. Delayed the last fireball so you can get out. There you can get out. There you go. There you go. So now we kind of picked apart the school a little bit. Yeah. There are some things that we do love here in this school, right? Uh, there are, there are. I mean, I, you know, the the whole healing positive energy thing is is, is a it, it just is weird, right? Like we were saying a minute ago. It just, oh yeah. Where does it yeah. fit? Where does it go? I, I think to me the biggest thing about it before moving on to what we really do love about evocation is oh, yeah, yeah. if the plane of positive energy, which is not in the DMG, and I'm not even sure is a part of Fifth Edition cosmology, because uh, I, I looked for it last night and I didn't see it. But it has been in, in D and D yeah. uh, lore before. And big shout out to friend of the show uh, Sean McGovern of Power Score RPG. He's got a blog post on the plane of positive energy, which is all you should ever need for running adventures there, uh, should you want to. Uh, oh and so check just out his... Constantly stab yourself. You pretty much have to. <laughs> uh, you just have to constantly be opening your veins. As the, uh, as otherwise you'll die. You'll explode uh, from, over, from, healing. from healing. So <laughs> you have this plane in Dungeons & Dragons that is basically an infinite battery of HPs. Yeah. And I cannot for the life of me figure out why every two-bit ruler and whatever in all these prime material planes isn't hiring a, a, a wizard to just go, can you give me like a dime-sized portal to the plane of positive energy? Just something every morning I can just bask in it for a minute. You just touch it. I just touch it. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I add it to my coffee in the morning uh -huh. yeah. and then I go about my, just a little bit, you know, you don't want to get like, uh, you know, get cancerous growths that take over your entire body and turn you into a giant Stagoth beast. You no, don't no, want no. to explode because you were healed to double your hit point total. You don't want to, there's all these things. You don't want to be stricken blind and deaf and mute and the like. It's the plane of, of creation and life. It's the place where souls in D&D &D are born, are, are created, and there are beings there that tend those souls. I think that's the justification they give, that if, if evocation is channeling magical energy, then healing energy is just as much planar energy as anything else. I ask the designers of d &E, how come there are not more negative energy effects in evocation then? Yep. Because negative energy is the counterpoint to positive energy plane. They sit at the poles of the inner, pl of the inner uh, elemental planes. And so why is it that negative energy effects tend to be associated with necromancy as opposed to evocation, which is about pulling magical energy and manipulating it and the like. So again, we, we come to these sort of <laughs> like these knots of inconsistencies that if you're trying to make sense of it can, uh, 
can be frustrating, but there is fodder there. There's there's inspiration to be had, and and certainly gems uh, in in uh, the spell system. Yeah, because I mean, you know, <laughs> healing magic's pretty fun. Sure, it's uh, yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's what keeps you going. Absolutely, uh, it's the best part of waking up. Yeah, mostly because D and D doesn't have folders, but um, so oddballs. We kind of, I mean, we've covered all my oddballs that, uh, I, yeah. that I care about. Yeah. Um, do you have any more? I, you know, I, I, the, I have just sort of like the broad categories of them. Healing seems like an oddball for me. Right, right. The, the telepathy and sending type spells. And then those spells that sort of create things. I, I will say this, and, and I've said it before, uh, and I, I will never not take the opportunity to talk about it. I enjoy acid as a damage type. I just don't yeah. think it should be, I just think it belongs in evocation. And like we talked about, it's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Acid just exists. It's a substance. It's a substance. Exists. Right, yeah, yeah. The I mean, same yeah. as poison is a right. substance. And, and bases you know. can be corrosive as well. So why not bases, right? Like why yeah. can't you summon a base anyway yeah but <laughs> the idea right. that you would say like summon a, a, a giant beach ball sized sphere of highly caustic acid and then hurl it at someone as I've said many times I find to be one of the most gruesome things that you could do with D&D magic you know you can swap people's minds and replace them with your own you can grow clones of yourself summon demons and everything but there's mm -hmm. really something about burning someone with acid and melting their skin off that's that's a big line for me uh, yeah because you you're know, stripping your identity like, as you're killing you're just like god um, <laughs> I don't know it just you're melting them yeah uh, but the, there's a know. body horror there that I can't not think about Robocop sure um, sure well you know I you know body horror and D&D &D are, are two ta two great tastes that go uh, great together let's go through some of our faves and our the, the opposite of faves whatever. some stinkers your stinkers I, I just wrote boo Oh. Just like, <laughs> boo. Um, how, how do you want to do this? Do you just want to go in general? I, I, want, to end, I want to end on a good note. So let's talk about the stinkers. The cantrips. Sure. For you. What, are there any stinkers uh, in the cantrips for you? Lightning lure seems like a, a very situational type spell. And, yeah. and, and while if I was playing like a really melee focused, uh, you know, gish type character, uh, mm -hmm. a hex blade or, or, uh, or maybe, maybe a blade singer, although yeah. I, I really like blade singer for just a really defensive uh, wizard. Trust me, they're amazing. <laughs> right. I'm playing one right now. I'm not playing at all getting in the melee, even though I do every now and again. Sure, you can. But I you stay too. back with my insanely stupid AC, my yeah. AC of 21 that I bump to a 26 when somebody's stupid enough to try to hit me. Yeah. And I have mirror image up. Yeah. And then last fight, I had blur God. and mirror image up with my blade song going. I mean, I'm, I, I think I've been hit twice, one of which was like uh, friendly fire damage. Yeah. Try it out, it's fun. Sure. Lightning lure, what I, Lightning I lure. see that, like if you have your uh, like a fire shield up or something does like an ambient damage type if uh -huh. somebody's near you, yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. You, yeah. you throw, you, you, you pull them in. You're on the other side of a wall of four, or a wall of fire yeah. or something, you wanna bring them through that. Yeah, yeah. yeah if you can do that, that's great. You yeah. Know, get them near you. If yeah. they want to stay there long enough so you can hit them with a booming blade, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. they're like, oh shit, I'm getting burned. Well, go ahead and run away now. I guess the range on it is, is a little limited com compared to sort of some of the other control type spells. Of course, yeah. now I'm comparing it to like a, a souped up Eldritch Blast with a warlock who's taken all of those uh, invoca invocations that let you push people, pull people, yeah. move them around with your Eldritch well, Blast. Compared to that, see, Lightning Lure is uh, lackluster. See, right? I would say also uh, if you had your fly going, you go up to that ubiquitous cliff. Sure. Yeah. Lightning and learn you just pull them just off. Just pull them off, yeah. You so, know, I mean, yeah. it's situational, but I mean, yeah, it's probably one of the weakest. I, you know, I can oh, see wait, myself not... taking it later on, right? I can yeah. see, I can see myself going like, I've got the cantrips I want. Now yeah. I want one that I can play around with. To me, like, I don't really have a stinker in the cantrips because they're all pretty solid. But we'll get to that first yeah. level though. <sighs> yeah, uh, I, I would say the big one for me is going to be Witch Bolt. Yep. I <laughs> it, just, I don't understand with everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Why not just make the sustaining thing a bonus action? Yes. It could be right. like it could be one of the best spells that you'll take. Yeah. Yeah. For a wizard. Mm -hmm. Having a bonus action just like yeah. holding that lightning yeah. while you're doing other things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But no. But it's not. And if I recall, it has a very limited range on it as well. And so if the if, if someone like moves out of that range or something, yeah, it's, it's it very it. easy to break. The fact that it's so costly in terms of the action economy and, and, and the damage is... But it's just one of those spells where I look at it and I go, I, I like the concept of this, right? Mm -hmm. I like I'm channeling lightning. you got that scene yeah, from like Return of the Jedi and oh, the Force lightning. And yeah. All that. I, I want more. Imagine right. if it was a bonus and they try to run away and every round lightning lore pull them back. So okay, Pull right, there's another, and then now Pull you're just back. like manipulating just, the yeah. magical energy of it. Yeah, the lightning yeah. that's pulling them around. I, yeah, that's really cool. Actually, I really like that image. And when I see a spell like that, 
Mm -hmm. When I see a spell that I'm like, I can never imagine myself taking this. You know, it's like a small part of me dies. I'm just getting over, we're getting really dramatic. It, it's an option that I'm not gonna take. And it's one of those things where you can say, oh, Jim, of course you could take it, it's your choice. Yes, it is, I'm owning it. I choose mm -hmm. not to take it because it is a subpar uh, spell in my in my opinion. But the, the concept behind it, the idea of it, it it's, it's not that all of it is bad, I just find the execution of it. And so it makes yeah. me wanna go like, should, is it a bonus action? You know, is there some way that we can uh, play around with the duration of it or or how it interacts with the inter uh, mm -hmm. action economy. If you just shift that the sustain to a bonus, like I would allow that in my game. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think it would break anything. Yeah. Um, having some extra damage while you're throwing other stuff up. Sure. Why the hell not? Yeah. So second level, for me, snowball storm. Snillux. 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 Snowball, snowball storm. storm. What are these? Are like I would rather the, take shatter. Right, like a uh, locked door. You, there's so many other things you can do with shatter. Right, there's yeah. when you need to like destroy something. Shatter is a great spell. You know, certain types of clerics. Uh, obviously, shatter. You know, Tempest clerics can do a lot of fun things with, mm -hmm. uh, with shatter. But if I was looking for like a damaging second level spell and I wasn't going to go with a fire spell, mm -hmm. then I probably would go uh, shatter if it was available for me. But like Snillux Snowball Swarm is just. It does damage in a group. I get that. Yeah. But okay. It's a smaller group, I think. It's, it's only a smaller. Like... Yeah. Some of those like first and second level area of effect spells are usually like just like a ten foot uh, mm -hmm. sort of radius. Ice knife is another it would be sort of an example of that, although it's a different uh, spell school. Here's where I would take th things like uh, witch bolt or snowball swarm or something on a villain, right? Like I will take suboptimal spells on a villain all day long because I just want variety and, and something different. And, yeah. and to, you know, a lot of times you can use one of these on on the players, and because they've never taken it. They're like, oh my god, what spell is this? Like, and they freak out a little bit, you know, when you do bust out a Witch Bolt or something. You know, maybe this is why your Evoker antagonist has, uh, you know, minions that they can, like, shoot the spell over to them and how now they've got to concentrate on it or use their action to sustain it because they're mm -hmm. all linked by the magical ritual. I, I really like second level for utility and defense. I rarely take offensive spells at second level anyway. Oh, yeah. um, I, I'd much rather bump up a magic missile then, you know, if I'm going to use a second level slot, I, I'm, I, you know, like if I'm having a roll to hit where my target is getting a save, then I feel like I've already lost. And so that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's usually why Magic Missile would be, uh, you know, I just cast a second level version of it instead of one of the second level offerings from uh, Yeah, not a Scorching Ray or Agnesar Scorcher. Scorching Ray's all right. You know, I, I, I might use it. It's sort of a, it's a nice one, but like I said, I got, I got cantrips and first level spells for offense, second levels for defense, baby. Let's move up into like third, fourth level. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you got? A lightning Bolt is one of those that I, I wish got as much love as, as Fireball, right? And mm -hmm. I can see why it doesn't. I really like the second edition and old school versions of both Fireball and Lightning Bolt. The Fireball that takes up a volume so you can cast it in a corner and it like quadruples <laughs> the, the damage and everything else. It has concussive force to it. You can blow open doors, set things on fire. Just the flash of fire that doesn't have any consequences for using it in a cramped hallway yeah. is not interesting to me. Yeah, it used to be, uh, you know, when, when when we would be dungeon delving and yeah. somebody's like, I cast fireball and everybody's like, wait, whoa, yeah, wait, whoa. Like, well, yeah. dude. But you know. <laughs> and then the, the difficulty there is that the dungeon master or the players now have to start counting volume and if they're mm -hmm. not uh, mathematically inclined or don't have tools to do that quickly, that can really grind play to a halt. Do you even <laughs> math, bro? <laughs> right? Uh, I don't know. I don't math to the point that I can understand the volume of like large uh, three-dimensional spaces. That's not my thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I usually hand wave those sorts of things or just use dice, right? Like if you've got a battle mat or something, you can just sort of arrange the dice uh, in where the rough area would be and then use those as ways to sort of manipulate and see, okay, I aimed this fireball that that, that we're doing second edition style at uh, you know at the back wall, so it's going to double up over it. Or mm -hmm. the ceilings are really low here, so I aimed it at the ceiling. It's going to blast down over the enemies. It's going to like a double strength fireball that blasts down. But maybe you miscalculated or, or something, and you, you know you risk a backdraft or something coming back mm -hmm. on the party. Which is why lightning bolt was invented in the first place well, to I, shoot a bolt of lightning down a tunnel down a and tunnel. Have it bank off the walls and yeah. around corners and stuff. Oh um, yeah, and there was a, there was nothing worse than the lightning bolt when it's only 50 feet down a hallway. Right, and, and so it hits the back wall, and, <laughs> and then it comes and back bounces and back. Like, oh, right, yeah, shit. yeah. Never cast a lightning bolt straight on in a dungeon. Can't bank it off the walls, right? Yeah. Put a little English on it. These two spells at, at third level, and why we're talking about the old school versions of them, are, are sort of like uh, they're the ways in which magic has been changed over the editions to be more friendly to the kind of tactical encounter. 
yeah. that that the game has shifted in focus to by saying like yeah fireballs you don't have to worry about casting them in a, in a tight corridor you know as long as you're outside the radius of, of when it when it hits you're in no danger of, of hurting yourself yeah and your lightning bolt isn't going to bounce back on you uh, you know without you realizing it but at the same time that makes magic dangerous mm -hmm. it means that the people who are using magic have to pay attention have to think about where they're placing things and, and consider the game from uh, more than just I want to damage as many enemies as possible um, that's why I like using those uh, versions of the the spells because it's sort of like I don't know it adds a bit of complexity to mm -hmm. it. But in terms of stinkers, I don't really have any for a while. Most of the mid-level uh, evocation spells are pretty solid. I, I really like yeah. them, you know? There's yeah. a lot of utility, a lot of, a lot of good things going yeah, on. Yeah, other than the oddballs, uh, I, for me, like really, the only one I have left is seventh level, Morning Caden Sword. Yeah, seventh I, level. Seventh level. You did a bunch of theory crafting on this uh, with it, comparing it to spiritual weapon. Yeah. Compared to spiritual weapon, comparing it to shadow blade. Right. The, and the even illusion flame spell. blade. Uh huh. Because uh, flame blade, I think, is pretty. Or no, you can bump it up with yep. with higher levels. Mm -hmm. But like Morden Sword is what three D ten. Three to thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same same level of an upcast spiritual weapon. Now I realize that one's an arcane and one's a cleric. Spell, sure, sure. But certain arcane casters can get spiritual weapon. I'm looking at you, divine soul sorcerer. Right, right. Um, a Morden cane and sword is a far inferior spell. Yeah. It's concentration. Mm -hmm. It only does thirty damage. Yeah. And at that point, you can get what six? I think it's like six d eight. Mm -hmm. on, a, on a spiritual on a weapon. spiritual weapon that doesn't so you're, con you're require pumping, concentration. You're, doesn't require concentration. Mm -hmm. You're pumping out 6 to 48. Right. Uh, and it doesn't, if I recall uh, from reading the spell, it, it also has a different action economy to it, right? Like a Morden kind of sword uses your action yeah, you, to you control attack. it as opposed to the bonus action. And I think that it, you can you can put it down and then resummon it as yeah. a bonus. Mm -hmm. But still, like, it's just like, really? I, I want it to do more, right? You make a melee spell attack with it. and, and For 7th uh, level. For 7th level, yeah. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want more out of it. I, I, I want it to do something like with a rider or something like 3D10 plus something else. Like they have to make a save or something else happens, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm remembering the, the second edition spell, or sorry, third edition Black Blade of Disaster, which was a ninth level spell that like disintegrated the target. Like it would do damage and if it killed you, it disintegrated you. And I think you also had to like make a save. And really when I looked at Morden Kind and Sword, I was like, I just, I mean, I, I get the Cleric, Arcane, very different uh, spells, very different needs. But I, I see spiritual weapon as like the mainstay of, 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 clear, of combat cleric, right? Mm -hmm. Spiritual guardians, or spirit guardians, spiritual weapon, and then either just like wading in with your cantrips or, or a big weapon. And I want the same from a Morgan kind of sword. I want that wizard who just, you know, forms their sword out of pure magic force and uses it to great effect. And, and maybe even, I guess what I really want is a sword that combines a better version of Morgan kind of sword with Tensor's Transformation. <laughs> right. right. Uh, and then it's now now a, a magic sword you summon that turns you into a, a warrior um, yeah, yeah. if you need and, it. And I mean, you know, in another school, but Shadow Blade's even better also because right. you can throw it. And it's and got all this advantage it's, in the it's dark. Got finesse and, and, you know, and all I these mean, other things, yeah. I mean, obviously that's a much better choice than Morden Kynan Sword when you're talking about arcane versus divine right. uh, with your second level, you know, melee attack spell. Yeah. But... Yeah, I get you. Within yeah. the school, it's just kind of like, really? Yeah, it, it, it sticks out, particularly because, like, at the same level, and this is sort of moving on to, to, to my faves, is Prismatic Spray. Oh. And, and prismatic Spray is, is one of those iconic spells, the excellent Prismatic Spray, of course. It's maybe is not as, you know, as ostentatious as you would like it. And, and, and certainly, if you're, if you're familiar with Vance, it's not as just, like, holy crap amazing <laughs> as it is in the uh, short stories but prismatic spray is iconic to me right like you're just summoning this kaleidoscopic spray of magical energy and it's it's like evocation in all of its raw power and, mm -hmm. and, and magnitude you know it's fire and lightning and, and, and you can imagine a, a victim who's sort of uh, caught in the full blast of this thing, just being burned and scorched and shocked and frostbitten and, and all the other things that uh, that come about from the uh, the prismatic spray. And it's just it's fun. I've, I've built entire villains around prismatic magic and and them being masters of this kaleidoscope. Of, of raw magical power, um, mm -hmm. so it, it's to me it's like it's iconic, it, it's fun, it, it's flashy. We started back here with chromatic orb and color spray, and now we're at prismatic, and we're on our way to the wall. Yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, gonna, so, we're gonna get that. Wall. We're gonna go all the way to that prismatic wall. It tops uh, my faves list as as sort of an iconic evocation mm -hmm. that you know, regardless of the mechanics of it, I I always want to cast it. I love the the higher levels of 
the the iconic fireball and lightning bolt. I mean, delayed blast fireball is a lot of fun. If you can get it in the right scenario, it's pretty fun. <laughs> it's pretty fun. I, Same I, with chain lightning. Sure, chain lightning is a good one. And and you know, if you're worried about hitting your uh, your companions and the like, uh, I mean, even cold of cold is is just a bigger area than a lot of those mm -hmm. uh, you know a lot of those types of spells. But delayed blast is really fun. Now, I haven't used it in fifth edition uh, yet, but I do remember in previous editions just being able to do things like time stop and leave <laughs> yeah, and leave as many delayed, delayed blasts as <laughs> now, you want. Or, I think it's concentration. Now, yeah, it, so it kind of like prevents kind of, that. Kind of prevent that, but God, I forgot who did that back in the day. But it's just like, <laughs> yeah, four fireballs go off at the same time. At the time. same time. <laughs> but, you know. uh, and so I, I I really like that one as well. All of the big blasting spells mm -hmm. are, are, are fun. But contingency know. is a lot of fun. Even though it is, a, it is a big like investment. Yeah. But if you're one of those wizards that likes to plan ahead, yeah. you can have anything ready at any right. moment. The second someone attacks you. Yeah. Misty you know, Step. Misty Step, yeah, Dimension like, Door. I mean, there's so many things yeah. you can do. I, I, I'm dropped below half, half hit points. Well, Dimension Door me somewhere. I get attacked uh, by surprise, Stone Skin or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, you, you can do a lot of uh, a lot of fun things with Contingency. Now, again, it's not like it was in Edition's past where you can have nested, stacked. Yeah. Because you still just have the one Contingency on you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like you can have like eight uh, <laughs> or however as many as you feel like uh, casting. This is my Contingency when I get attacked. This is my I Contingency know. when I get hit. Yeah, this I is my Contingency guys. when I see my ex. Uh -huh. You know. Uh -huh. That's why you should play Baldur's Gate too, right? Like all those Contingencies go up. Anyway, yeah. that's sort of a good one. I, I really like Sickening Radiance. Dude. You read my I, mind, uh, right? Like, if, if you could combine Sickening Radiance with another caster oh and God. either throw what is, is it, Storm Sphere, the Storm Sphere, or Maelstrom, Maelstrom, Entanglement, you know, Ember's any, Black Tentacles, anything yeah. to keep someone and then just melt them, just melt them, just like kill them with Radiation Sickness. Uh, even yeah. just a Grappler, right? Every turn you're having to make these saves to avoid damage and to avoid gaining levels of exhaustion. Yes. And this is one of those where the more they start failing their saves, the worse it's going to get for them. Get them to three. Right. All and then, that, then it's pretty much over. Six rounds, you can kill someone with this. Yeah. All you need to really do is just hold them there for a couple of rounds till they start failing saves. Now, once they start getting disadvantage on their saves. Yeah, which is three levels. Right. Then it's it, it's downhill from there for them. Eventually, they won't be able to even move out of the area of Yeah, then it's like half hit points, then no movement, then death. And then death. And, so, and, and so it's tough. It, it's, a, <laughs> it's a nasty spell and you know, obviously you you can designate the spell lets you designate who is who is and isn't affected by it it's just a, a really fun one and a great control spell and, and a wide uh, area of effect that that I really uh, I really like I enjoy Melf's minute meteors even though it's a little low on the damage and you are making attacks yeah. But just the fact that you can just throw these meteors out and hit an area, and it's a, it's something for a bonus action. Right. I, I'm sorry, but I love the idea of these things sort of just like swirling around, around, around you. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's that's a lot of fun. I mean, who doesn't love Lamus Tiny Hut? Right. Like, so this, it, it is a, it is a badass spell. It is a really badass spell, and I I think that there are uh, you know we've talked about it before on the uh, on the show and, and shows about dungeon delving and sort of maintaining tension as they make their way through the dungeon. But in in sort of like thinking of it in in different terms, it can be used as a, a combat platform. Uh, you know there are ways to uh, around that. There's there's things that the enemies can do, including just leave. It's a force dome that mm -hmm. allows you to uh, you know project things out of it and to move in and out of it stop thinking about it as a, a uh, you know as a travel spell as a survival spell or that the spell of the exploration sphere and thinking about it as a you know the, the players have to defend a static location it takes a while to set up it's not an in combat I cast this in one round kind of spell right, right? they either have to set it up with a ritual or, or use the the long casting time for it but if the players know I've, I've got to like defend this location then why not summon a hemisphere of force that they can shoot arrows out of you know it, it sounds like a really great defensive spell yeah you know you know you maybe have two <laughs> tunnels you got to guard you sure put it, you put it in front of one archer get in the dome and you guard you that the dome, yeah a they can't come through it uh -huh. and b you're just peppering them with arrows and then everyone else can focus on the other tunnel maybe, this may be one of those things where if you're, you get tired of your players doing it to you then maybe you do it to your players once or mm -hmm. twice then or, or <laughs> if the just players test them yeah. test them out see what they do or if the players constantly <laughs> uh you know Use it to, to, to just hide from the enemy. Yeah. Just collapse a tunnel on top. It collapses a tunnel on a burrow underneath them, uh, all kinds of things. You flood the room that they're in. <laughs> uh, lots of things you can do with it. Uh, I think for me, rounding out my faves is the, a trio of first level spells that I really like. One of them mentioned before Magic Missile. Auto damage, like I just do it. it. It's a force effect, so you have that going on. It's an auto hit. It's just a, a, a classic spell, and I think like 
the way that the, that fifth edition has handled it in the same manner as like fireball and lightning has turned it into more of an iconic uh, first level attack. But guiding bolt gets big thumbs up for me. I love guiding bolt. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not I'm not a big cleric player uh, in, in this edition, but I have seen so many times where guiding bolt is the clutch spell that yeah. that ensures that the bad guy is hit next round because of advantage and does decent damage itself. It's just mm -hmm. like everything you want out of a cleric offensive spell. Good damage, oh, uh, yeah. support for the rest of your party, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, so. always have it always have it ready to go and just hope that you go in initiative right before the barbarian mm -hmm. or the or the rogue. Oh yeah, yeah. Or yeah. the paladin. Yeah, you know, just one of those you where you go right before them. You should be doing that every time. Yeah, just know? do it every time. Your barbarian will appreciate it because then they don't have to recklessly attack and, mm -hmm. and risk getting hurt them, you know, more hurt themselves. And I like uh, Guiding Bolt because it reminds me of an old spell called Bolt of Glory, which if you're familiar with the Greyhawk deity Hieronymus, who's like this, you know, just champion god of justice and goodness and, and mm -hmm. righteousness and I think probably war. They're all war gods. Uh, Bolt of Glory was one of his spells and I, I was sort of liked that idea of summoning just the raw magnitude and power of a deity. And yeah, yeah blasting your foes with it. Uh, I think for me, Chaos Bolt, I mentioned it. I love Chaos Bolt just because it's weird, you know? I, I, I like taking it on a Draconic Sorcerer or, mm -hmm. or something like that, or a Wild Sorcerer. But the, the last for me, for my for my faves, has got to be Bigby's Hand. Uh, first up, multifunction, right? Yeah. You get like eight, you're not eight, but you get like five spells uh, for the, the price of one. And it does a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And it's just versatile, and you can change it up round and round. Yeah. Uh, there's just a lot to like about Bigby's hand. That, mm -hmm. That's really fun. Hold someone back. You can you you can grapple them. Thump them. You can thump them. <laughs> punch them. Um, boil them. Mash them. Mix right. them in a stew. Mix them in a stew. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You get Bigby's hand, baby. You got a stew going. Go <laughs> Head on over to Patreon for our weekly podcast and so much more. WebDM is also on Twitch with three weekly games, Starward Bound, Unearthly Twilights, and Land Between Two Rivers, which we upload to WebDM Plays, our second YouTube channel.